I can tell you she is clever. And, need I add? She loves me! <laughs> I say, Pride, what are you on about? Do come along. Sir Chef take a pride at a dog show, Amy. Who's he? <laughs> Sir George Crofts, an old friend of Mrs. Morris. I believe that better get inside. Frank! Hello. The Roman father. Yes, Governor, all right, presently. Look here, Pride. You'd best go in. I'll join you directly. Very well. Who are your friends here, sir, if I may ask? Oh, it's all right. Come in. No, sir. Not until I know whose garden I am entering. It's all right. It's Miss Warren's. I have not seen her at church since she came. Of course not. She's a third wrangler. Ever so intellectual. Took a higher degree than you did. So why should she go to hear you preach? Don't be disrespectful, sir. It don't matter. Nobody hears us. Come in. I want to introduce you to her. Do you remember the advice that you gave me last July, Governor? Yes, sir. I told you to conquer your idleness and flippancy, to work your way into a good profession, and live on it, and not upon me. No. That's what you thought of afterwards. What you really said was that since I had neither money nor brains, that I'd better turn my good looks into account by marrying someone with both. <laughs> Look here. Miss Warren had brains. You can't deny that. Brains aren't everything. No, of course not. There's the money. <laughs> of money, sir. I'm thinking of higher things. Social position, for instance. I don't care a rap about that. But I do, sir. Well, nobody wants you to marry her. <laughs> and anyhow, she has what amounts to a high Cambridge degree and seems to have as much money as she wants. I greatly doubt whether she has as much money as you will want. Oh, come. <laughs> I haven't been so very extravagant. I live ever so quietly. I don't drink. I don't bet much. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> and I never go to the razzle-dazzle as you did when you were my age. <laughs> well, you told me yourself when I was making every such an ass of myself about the bomb made at Red Hill that you once offered one fifty pounds the letters you wrote to her. For heaven's sake, you are taking ungentlemanly advantage of something I told you in confidence to save you from an error you would have repented all your life long. Take warning by your father's follies, sir, and don't make them an excuse for your own. Did you ever hear the story of the Duke of Wellington and his letters? No, sir, and I don't want to The old iron duke didn't throw away fifty pounds. No, not he. He simply wrote, Dear Jenny, published and be damned, yours affectionately, Wellington. That's what you should have done. <laughs>